How's it going everyone? In today's video we're going to be looking at five useful formatting tricks that we can use in Rust. Starting with the first trick and this has to do with text alignment. So if we were to recreate this print line statement and add some curly brackets we can then add the colon, a left arrow and hen. And this is going to left align our variable. I just wrote left because it was convenient, but it can be literally anything. It could be X or it could be 10. It's going to left align it and occupy 10 spaces. And when we run this, you'll notice that X will be pushed all the way to the left. Although I meant for this to be called left. Or to be honest, you probably don't notice anything because there's a lot of empty space. So to visualize what it actually did, we can pass in a colon and then put value here. So this is just a regular string, which means that when we run this the next time, you'll notice that left will occupy 10 spaces and it's going to be left aligned. Then everything after it is going to continue as normal. Otherwise, we can also change the direction to the right. So here I'm just going to type in right. And the next time we run this, you'll notice that this will be right aligned. It's going to occupy a total of 10 spaces and then align the remaining text to the right. If the string ends up being of a length of 10 or more, nothing's going to happen. And finally, we also have the center alignment, which we can create using this caret. And here we'll just type in center. Now, the next time we run this, you should notice that the text will be center aligned. And that's pretty cool if you want to work with text alignment. But there's one more thing I want to show you, and that is that you can specify a fill character. For example, you can add a bullet point here in front of the direction, or you could add an underscore here, or in front of the caret, you could add a question mark. And when you run this, you'll notice that it's going to use whatever character you chose to fill the remaining spaces. Moving on to the second formatting trick, decimal rounding. Sometimes you're going to end up with a number that has far too many decimals. For example, we can say let n equal 1.2345678, and that should be an equals. And in this situation, we can pretend that we only care about the first two decimal places. So what we're going to do is print line, add the colon, and immediately after we can add a dot or a full stop or a period and specify the amount of decimal places we want this to be rounded up to. So here we can add dot two and then pass in our variable. Now, the next time we run this, what we should end up with is our rounded decimal number. Also, I do want to mention that you can place the variable in front of the colon, and that's going to work the exact same way. The only reason I like to place it after is because if you ever want to process that further, for example, n plus one or 1.1, you can do that and it will work just fine. But to add this inside here does not work and kind of complicates things. In Python, that would work, but here it does not. So I much prefer using the second approach, which is placing the variable after the comma. Moving on to formatting trick number three, scientific notation. And in this example, we're going to let n of type i64 equal 60 trillion. And for that to be accurate, I have to add three more zeros. I always mix up trillion and billion. Anyway, with 60 trillion, we can now print line and use colon e and then pass in our number. Now in the terminal, I'm going to run this and what we should end up with is 6e13. So six times 10 to the 13th power. And that's quite useful if you don't want to see these massive representations like 60 trillion, but it also works with decimal numbers. So if you have something such as 0 0.00012 and you were to run this, you'll notice that we'll get something such as 1.2e negative five. So whatever you insert, you're going to get the scientific notation for it being displayed. Up next, we have formatting trick number four. And this one has to do with always showing the sign of your number. For example, we might have a print line and here, all we have to do is add colon plus, and then we can specify a number. And now when we run this, what we'll end up with is plus 1000. So the sign is always going to be visible. By default, we only get the negative sign being shown. So if we have a negative 1000, that sign will always be shown regardless of what we specify here. Even if we remove that format specifier, we're still going to get negative 1000. But without that format specifier, the 1000 will not show the plus symbol. It will not show that it's a positive number. So if you do want it to show that it is a positive number, you can add colon plus. 
and that will make sure that any positive number will always contain the plus. And finally, we have our final formatting trick, which is very useful for debugging. And for this example, I'm going to create an array, which will equal one, two, and three. Now, if you're new to Rust, you probably tried to print line this array like this, and that did not work. So what you did next is you tried to add some curly brackets to that, and that also didn't work. And that's because it does not implement the display trait, which means Rust has no idea of how to display this information when you try to display it inside a string. So what you have to do in Rust is use the debug format specifier, which is a colon and a question mark. Then we can either pass in the array directly here or after the comma. But once again, I prefer to do it here because you can always perform some silly operation directly in the print statement. Anyway, once we've done that, we can type in cargo run and what we should get as an output is the array itself. And that also works for tuples. So if you were to type in one, two, three, and you were to run that, it will print that tuple just fine. And optionally, we can also tell print line to pretty print our data by adding a hashtag or a hash symbol in front of the question mark. Now, when we run this, we should get our information pretty printed. And personally, I hate this. I hate how it looks, especially when it comes to such a small array. I'm sure with more complex data types, this could be useful, but when it comes to simple information such as this one here, I hate this. And this is essentially the exact same thing as the debug macro. So if you don't mind the pretty printing, you can just use this macro instead, and you'll end up with the exact same result. Although the debug macro will also give you this extra information regarding where that line of code is being executed. So personally, what I did instead is create my own shortcut that creates a print line and uses the regular debug syntax. So here I can just type in array, and this will prevent it from being pretty printed. So if we were to run this, you'll see that this is what my output's going to look like. And for simple data, I much prefer this approach because this is just far too much in my opinion. But yeah, that's really all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any format specifiers which you love using or which you find very useful. I'd love to hear about that in the comment section down below. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.